Hey, welcome to another video. So today we're going to be talking about the historical sources for the Dance of the Dragons. But before I begin, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the Sith Citadel Discord, links in the description, and consider becoming a join member or sending a super thanks if you wish to further support the channel. Otherwise, let's jump straight into it. The Dance of the Dragons further had influences upon the future Targaryen succession. Upon the death of King Baelor Targaryen in 171 AC, the succession of the throne was unclear. Since Baelor had no children and had not appointed an heir, there were some lords and small folk who felt the Iron Throne should pass to the eldest of his sisters, Princess Dana Targaryen. However, other recalled the troubled time when Rhaenyra Targaryen sat the Iron Throne. The dance was part of the reason why Prince Viserys Targaryen, Baelor's uncle, was chosen to ascend the throne over the wild Dana. By choosing Viserys over Dana, a precedent was set for women coming after all men in Targaryen succession since the dance. During the reign of King Aerys I Targaryen, his niece, Princess Elora Targaryen, was made the Princess of Dragonstone, even while her uncle and male cousins still lived, though her own suicide prevented her ascension to the throne. Following her death, Prince Makar Targaryen was made heir over Elora's younger sister, Princess Daenora. There were several main sources for historical information on the Dance of the Dragons, which are frequently at odds with each other. The first was written by Grandmaster Orwile, who had served King Aegon II on his council and was arrested by the forces of Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen when she took the city. Orwile wrote his account while locked away in the Black Cells. Uncertain about whether or not he would survive the war, he attempted to paint himself in the best light possible. Grandmaster Munkin's The Dance of the Dragons, A True Telling, was based on Orwile's account. It is somewhat inaccurate history. The next major source was written by Septon Eustace, who served at the Red Keep at the time of Viserys' death. Eustace wrote the reign of King Viserys after the war had concluded. His account is biased, favoring Aegon over Rhaenyra. The th fourth major source of the account is the Dwarf Mushroom, the court fool at the Red Keep during the reign of King Viserys Targaryen who was with Rhaenyra on Dragonstone when the war broke out. Mushroom was believed to be a lackwit by the court, and thus people often spoke freely around him. His account, The Testimony of Mushroom, contains detailed descriptions of plots, murders, trysts, and debaucheries, and more. Although Mushroom's account often differs significantly from Septon Eustace's account, there are some surprising points of agreement. During his reign, King Baelord I Targaryen had Mushroom's book burned on account of its ribald and scandalous content. Archmaester Galdwin also is included in the Dance of the Dragons, Fire and Blood, making use of the accounts that were written down before him and comparing them where needed. The Princess and the Queen, or the Blacks and the Greens, is an excerpt from Galdwin's work. Galdwin believes the designation of a dance to be wildly inappropriate for a bloody war, and assumes it was poetically named by a singer. The Archmaester instead thinks The Dying of the Dragons would have been a more fitting title. Maester Yandol discusses the dance in his book, The World of Ice and Fire. So what did you guys think of the historical sources of The Dance of the Dragons? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, join the Sith Citadel Discord, links in the description, and consider becoming a join member or sending a super thanks if you wish to further support the channel. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.